why should you pick the Pro or why should you pick the Pro Max? Which one will work for you? And I'm going to base it off of my own experiences. Hello everyone, this is Tristan from Crafting Worlds, where the arts meet community. If you want to know more about that, check the links in the description on how you can join and become part of that community going forward. Today we're going to be talking about how do you pick between the Pro Max and the iPhone 13 Pro. They're nearly identical, except for the size. I mean, this you saw me almost drop it right there. This is a big phone. Usually you see these tech specs and these breakdowns side by side, and it doesn't really help because you haven't experienced it. And I have experienced this. And so I wanted to share that with you. Okay. Let me first explain how it went when I first got, you know, the Pro Max. And I loved it. Oh, I love this phone. I absolutely love this phone. I think it is fantastic. It is enormous. The screen is crisp. The 120 hertz display is beautiful. The sound that comes out of this is so loud. It's beautiful. It's freaking fantastic. I've actually put these two side by side and listened to the sound and this still gets really loud and it's still a very fantastic sound. But man, this just gets like two, two to three decibels louder and that can make a difference. I put the app Peloton on my phone and I put it on the rest and it syncs up with it. It really can boost and it can really hit you and you're like, yeah, and you're biking and then the louder you can get it, the better sometimes. Media consumption. Oh, amazing. I literally have put this above my bed as a TV on a little like a little arm reach out display so that I could watch movies in my bed, even though I have like this big setup right in front of me and I have a big ass 55 inch TV. Sometimes I just preferred to watch it on this, especially with that ProMotion display. 120 hertz, it's beautiful. <sighs> so why am I not sticking with this? Why am I not sticking with this? It doesn't make any sense. I love this phone. And I think if you buy it, you would love it too. Let me preface this with, I got my hands on the Google Pixel Pro. Aesthetics alone, I loved it. I loved the uh, refresh rate. I loved everything about it. And so I, this time when the iPhone 13 Pro came out, I was like, hmm, do I want to try the Pro Max? Like I don't have huge hands, right? Like they're not small, but they're not huge. I'd say my hands are pretty average for the average human. I'm 5'10 and I have average hands. Um, <laughs> take that as you may. Can I handle the Pro Max? I know that sounds weird, but like these phones are really get it. You know, the Pro Max is really big. And I was like, you know what? For that display, because I, I really fell in love with this one. So I got myself the iPhone 13 Pro Max and I gave it a whirl for about a month. And let me tell you something, I learned a lot. It's less about like a pros and cons list and more about what works for you. So either way, you can't go wrong with either of these phones. They're fantastic. There, there's really no big difference other than three key components. One is size. We've got seven ounces on the Pro, the 13 Pro, and then we've got 8.4 ounces on the Pro Max, which is over half a pound. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're holding that in your hand for a while, it can start to add up. So the resolution on the Pro Max is 2,778 by 1,284. Then on the 13 Pro, it's got 2,532 by 1,170. And then the battery life. I swear to God, two days, three days sometimes, without charging it and just consuming, consuming so much. I never had to worry about, oh, it's getting towards the end of the day. Do I need to check the battery? Do I need to top it off? No, this thing was just like, no, nah, we're still at 80%. Um, it's like, ah, screw it. I don't even need to charge it. I never worried about charging this one. I'm not even being facetious on that. This battery lasts forever. It's one of the best batteries in an iPhone that I've ever used. So, I mean, the video playback on the Pro Max is 28 hours and on the Pro is 22. So that's it's a six hour difference. So that's a huge difference. And you definitely will notice that. I noticed it immediately switching back to the Pro, but at the same time, it didn't bother me because I still had enough juice to make it to the end of the day. And then I would charge it up or I charge it throughout the day. That's about as tech 
technical as I'm going to get in this entire review. So with all of that said, why the heck am I switching back to the iPhone 13 Pro? <sighs> Let me tell you something. I didn't want to. I love this phone. I am telling you, I love this phone. The fact that it gets so loud and can like just be used as, as an iPad, essentially, <sighs> it's tough because there's no stylus support on this, which I think is an oversight. Steve Jobs never wanted a stylus for his phones. Steve Jobs also never wanted a phone where you couldn't reach the end with your thumb and we're there. Why not just break down and let the Apple Pencil work on this? Because it's, it's an amazing tool that I love on my iPad. And to be able to use it on this, it, I think the problem is, is that it would take away from iPad sales. That's my opinion. There's also price. The Pro Max starts at $1,099 and then the Pro starts at $999. So the price difference is significant. What else about the Pro Max made it so that I switched back to the Pro? It doesn't fit in the pocket properly. And so the phone would fall out of my pocket because like half of it's hanging out of the pocket. Whereas this one just slides right in. Mind you, sometimes this doesn't fit in every pocket. And I'm sure there's a lot of women out there like pockets. <laughs> so if, if you really are worried about pocket space, go with the mini. Between the Pro and the Pro Max, the Pro Max is not meant for human pockets. It's just not. You know, you put on a case to that as well, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, you know that this channel is all about photography and filmmaking and stuff like that, and there's bonuses to having this bigger screen. So when you're filming, seeing what you're filming and being able to tap on cinematic mode for, you know, focus and spot focus and stuff like that, fantastic. But... All your accessories that hold your phone in place, you need to get upgraded versions or adapters or uh, just completely different ones because this phone is so much thicker. Whereas this one is not. You can use all your adapters that have worked on all your other iPhones, whereas the Max is that much bigger and the weight is that much heavier. You need more secure uh, attachments. There's a lot of things that you're trading and you're like, well, what am I trading it for at the end of the day? A larger screen, a little bit more volume and battery life. That's really what you're trading it for. And so you have to think to yourself, is that worth it? Is that worth it to me? And for me, it just wasn't. So I switched back to the Pro and I'm telling you, like all the pain in my wrist and stuff went away. But man, I it's still... it. I'm so used to this size that it's there's not much to report other than it, the ProMotion display is beautiful on here as well. The screen looks the same. It's just as crystal clear. The sound is just as good, just a little bit quieter. The overall feel in your hand is much easier to manage. However, man, I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss that bigger screen. I'm going to miss it. But this is my thought process. If I'm going to use this for a year, two years, three years, right? Can I make it through the whole year with carpal tunnel? <laughs> I know that sounds so stupid, but I guess, I guess it's just, it's so much easier to navigate this phone that I end up using it more. I wanted it to be worth it for me because uh, honestly, consuming media on this phone is just, it's so fantastic. But I had to really think about it and I had to go, is it more important that when I pull out my phone, I feel confident holding it? I feel as though I can reach all of the, you know, access to the phone and that I can use it for what it's meant for. Texting, photography, stuff like that. Like even taking a photo on this sometimes was a little difficult because it's really big and that size can slow you down. Whereas this one, I feel confident to whip it out, shoot a photo. I can do it one handed. And I feel like even because of the weight, I can hold it steadier. The Pixel 6 Pro was what convinced me to try the Pro Max. There's a lot of things that make it so it works. A, it's much lighter, but it's still just as tall, if not taller, as the uh, Pro Max. It's not as wide. And then because it's not as wide, it allows your hand to wrap around it really well. The Pro Max is so much wider than the uh, Pixel 6 Pro, and that's what I was feeling. I don't know why Apple went back to this design. Like, I get it from an aesthetic point, and I loved it. I was like, cool, we're going back to that old iPhone 4 look, and I loved that look. And let me tell you, on the Mini, perfect. It's great, feels good in your hand, and it's just the right size. But 
because this phone is so big, it's sharp around the edges. It's not ergonomically fitting in your hand. And it makes it difficult for you to grip it properly. I happen to have an iPhone 11. Look at these beautifully round edges. Like, this is great. Hey, cat. So, like, when you hold this in your hand, it feels right. It feels like you've got more of a grip on it. It contours to your hand. Whereas you put that Pro Max in your hand and the contour disappears. See the gaps? And it, it puts strain here, here. And so you've just got strain on your hand. And that is my biggest issue. Oh man, that's it. That's it. That's the whole, that's the whole reason. It's the weight and the ergonomics and the width. It's just like, that's a, that's a pretty big difference. And it's enough of a difference for me to for a device that I'm going to be using every day, want to go down in size, even if I'm losing a little bit of battery, even if I'm losing a little bit of sound, and even if I'm losing a little bit of that screen size. Um, yeah, because you get everything else. It, for finally, they, they gave you the macro lens. They gave you the telephoto lens. They gave you the wide angle lens. Everything's the same. Everything is the same, except for those three things. And... Uh, Ah, oh, it's rough, man. It's it's rough. First, first world problems are rough. But this is just so wide, so heavy that at the end of the day, you got to think about it and go, do I really want to be sacrificing my pockets? Do I want to be carrying around this heavy thing? Do I want to buy new accessories for everything? Your car holder, your uh, if you're doing any film work, your your brackets that hold the camera. It's just a very large beast with a beautiful battery, a beautiful screen, beautiful for gaming. I never really got into the gaming thing on iPhone and with this screen and with, with games like Rocket League and, and all these other ports, it's really fun to play on a phone like this. I feel like I tried a whole bunch of new things because of this phone and now ultimately I think that I will enjoy those things on just a slightly smaller display Ah, oh, but like even gaming on the 13 Pro, there was some benefits. One of the main benefits was that like if I'm Bluetooth connected to my Xbox controller and I put the little bracket on it, the bracket doesn't bend as much. Whereas with the Pro Max, because of the weight, sometimes if you twisted the controller, the bracket would fall and the Pro Max would just fall out of it. So that's it. That is why I switched from the iPhone 13 Pro Max to the iPhone 13 Pro. What do you think? Which phone would you use? Do you think that you would use the 13 Pro Max? Do you think that you'd use the 13 Pro? Do you think that you wouldn't use any of these? Would you go for the Mini? I love the Mini. I If I didn't need all the features that the Pro Series has, oh, I would absolutely 100% make this my go-to phone. Except I would say that on the Mini, like reading news or any news feed is just, it's not, it's very hard. <laughs> unless you have like really good eyesight because everything's so tiny. Here's my conclusion for my long-winded approach to this. You really can't go wrong, but you have to find what fits your hand, especially for an everyday phone. Like it's still a phone at the end of the day. You're still texting. You're still making calls, maybe. Your hand has to be comfortable. You don't want to have an aching hand. I know it makes you sound like such a wuss, but that extra weight holding half a pound of phone is actually very heavy. But man, for that extra sound and that battery and that screen, maybe it's worth it for you. Maybe you have bigger hands than I do. There's lots of reasons, but those are mine. I hope they help you make your decision on which iPhone you choose, the iPhone Pro or the iPhone Pro Max, if you're in the market for those. If you're not, then I don't really know why you're watching this video. Did you go down the rabbit hole? I feel like you went down the rabbit hole. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, dislike. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell icon. And once again, thank you so much for watching. There will be so many more videos coming out. We have so much more content coming. We're going to be talking about the Pixel Pro. We're going to be talking about the iPhone mini. And I'm going to show you how I could have filmed my entire first feature film on the mini and gotten better results than I did with the iPhone 6. 
it's incredible what's packed in these little phones now. Once again, this is Tristan from Crafting Worlds, and I hope to see you join the community. So see you there.